Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Mark Sussman, the editor of Willamette Week, and delighted to be here with Beth DeHamel, who is the interim CEO of Mercy Corps. Um, for those of you who don't know, Mercy Corps is a global humanitarian nonprofit based right here in River City. Um, Beth, you oversee an organization that, uh, as you told me earlier, has about 5,500 employees. That is correct. Are engaged all over the world, mostly in the developing world. Beth, so, um, you know, we're so, uh, Americans are so focused on America. We don't really spend a whole lot of time thinking about the rest of the world. Uh, I looked at a WHO map of Africa last week, and the rate of infection and the mortality rate from COVID in almost every country I looked at in Africa was way below that of the United States. So I, of course, I'm assuming you're a global expert on this. Um, <laughs> is that because the wave hasn't hit down there because of a lack of testing or what, what's your sense? Yeah, well, the one thing um, I will say, and all of the true experts on this say, is we don't have, we don't know. We don't have great data right now. But what we are seeing, and as you look at that map being updated, are more waves of infection. Um, and so in places like Somalia and Yemen, what we're seeing are more rapid growth in the virus, but we do not have good hard data. We don't even have that great good hard data here, but you can imagine in places where the, um, the government and the health systems are inadequate to begin with, the ability to actually measure is not good. Then there are refugee camps, places where um, uh, in internally displaced people live where there is no real uh, measurement. And the worry, the way people are forced to live in situations like that eliminates any possibility of social distancing. And even things like clean water and soap are luxury. And you might have seen the articles about Cox's Bazaar in Bangladesh, where the Rohingya have, there have been cases uh, noted there and grave concerns about the spread of the virus in a situation like that where people are living absolutely on top of each other with very limited access to clean water and sanitation. And you've given me a couple of examples where you're seeing a higher incidence of infection. I'm just wondering if you have some other examples where um, you're concerned that there's a supercluster or there's already evidence that uh, there's going to be a lot of infection. Yeah, well, um, we, are, we are worried about uh, urban areas in, around the world. As you've, you've probably also read um, about the growth of the infection in Central America, Colombia, Guatemala, um, and again, the big rural informal, urban, not rural, urban informal settlements where people live very closely together, often without running water, without toilets, um, without sanitation. So the growth in Central America has been news, public news and discussion this past week. We work in Afghanistan, and which is neighbors, Iran, as you know, and on the western border of Afghanistan, this is where the city of Herat is, which has been a global trading city for the millennium, um, many Afghan workers, guest workers in Iran, have been flooding back into Afghanistan during the during the infection and during the crisis. And they were coming across the border in large numbers without controls or quarantine. So we are seeing and worried about the impacts of that in Afghanistan. As you know, Afghanistan is a country with limit, very limited resources, great poverty, extreme conflict um, with the Taliban, an unfinished peace process, uh, governments that are a government that is functioning fairly and this influx of mostly young men guest workers coming back is a huge concern for us we work in Herat we work in Kabul we have a very big program there and are very concerned about that
Uh, we also, as an organization and as a sector, do not agree with the decision for the U.S. to withdraw from WHO. Um, that organization works with ministries of health around the world, plays a vital role of coordinating, um, of supporting, and this is not the right time for us to withdraw our support for that vital organization. Um, improvements can be made in any organization, but withdrawing, withdrawing U.S. support from WHO at this time, we feel is not in the best interest of the U.S. or of the world.